Hello everyone, uh, Pulsar here, and welcome to my second commentary multiplayer video for Asphalt 9. The first video in this series got a really positive response. Thank you everyone for commenting. So I decided to make another one. I just sat down one Thursday evening and I recorded some races with Ibigani. So these are six almost consecutive races uh, because I had to level up and I refilled my Pagani. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this one, so let's get into this. So as you can see, we are already in first position. Fortunately, a little bit of a mistake over there, but we can catch up again. Um, and I think this is one of the best cars to use in the current rush season, as long as you can use it. So in Platinum League and Legend League, especially in Platinum League, this will be the most, one of the most, if not the most dominant cars in your lineup if you have it five stars or six stars so mine is at five stars so it's not really fully upgraded as you can see its top speed is 376 kilometers an hour which will go up to 380 81 if you max this car out but still at five stars if you, you as you will see in this video it still performs very well so as you can see first lap wasn't much of an issue I managed to finish the first lap in first place and the second lap wasn't an issue either, as you can see here. I maintained my first position, and I came in first place. So we beat a bunch of higher ranked cars in this race, which was pretty cool. So this car is very competitive, even though it might not be fully upgraded. Now we move on to race number two of the video. Um, this is on Scotland, which is one of my stronger locations in this game and we start in first position. Obviously Corvettes and other B-class cars with better acceleration will try to knock us out, but as you can see, we are able to complete this drift without touching the wall and use Shockwave to get up to speed here. One of the drawbacks to this car is its mid-tier acceleration. It is not as, doesn't accelerate as fast as other top A-class cars like the Porsche 918 Spyder or the Lamborghini Aventador J but it is still a decent enough acceleration to allow it to be competitive in most most scenarios. So we're cruising through this first lap over here. Can't really see anyone on the mini-map here. Um, and thanks to our top speed and the ability to maintain it using the ramps, we were able to stay in first and maintain a strong lead over here. Again, it's nitro duration and the, the nitro du duration of this car is really good. So I was able to keep Shockwave up to that ramp over there and then do some other speed tricks here. Use Shockwave over here, which was pretty cool. And first lap, no problem at all. Our second lap wasn't much of an issue either, so we're going to skip to that. And as you can see, we come in in comfortable first place here. So we had to face a bunch of other higher ranked cars, but that wasn't much of an issue because we had good speed and we were able to come first here. Our third race is going to be on the roller coaster ride variant of the San Francisco location. San Francisco, I think, is overall one of my favorite, if not my favorite, locations in this game because there's so many opportunities to do speed tricks and ramps and a lot of stunts to improve your speed. The start of uh, the start of this variant is fully, very chaotic, um, but once you get past that, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I like, to, I like taking the right route over there just because it is proven to be the best, the better route to take and it is not that hard to do either. It's not very risky, although there is a little bit of risk involved. So I take sho I do shockwaves over here, I take some ramps and I maintain a fairly high speed here, close to 400, above 400. So as you can see that, um, that drift over there was very easy because of the fact that this car has very good drift. Um, and it's able to maintain a really high top speed, even though it takes, even if it takes the tightest of corners. So as long as you don't drift for too long, you should be able to maintain a 340 plus speed around most corners. That one over there was a U-turn, so really you can't really do much about that. But as you can see, with the nitro duration, we were able to maintain shockwave and finish first in the first lap, and therefore finish first in the second lap as well, because we made no mistakes. So, again, in this race, it was a full lobby, so plus 36, naturally. And we did face some higher ranked cars, 
some Pagani Hawaii BCs and events that are J's as well. So that was some great competition. Now we are going to test the handling capabilities of this car in the Caribbean tracks over here. So this is one of the variants of the Caribbean tracks that really puts your car's handling capabilities and your maintaining speed capabilities to the test as you can see. The start already features a big curve that you have to take sharply. As you can see I took that a bit wide so I missed the ramp and we were able to we have to maintain speed here which we were able to do and shockwave and use this force barrel trick over here to maintain uh, speed over here. So our shockwave lasted the entire section over there which is pretty cool. I, that's one thing I like about this car is that its shockwave can be just can just be abused and used so much to maintain speed and get higher air speeds. So this part of the track is where your handling starts um, getting tested. Drift around, that, drift around that corner without much of an issue and we are ahead of the competition by a long distance. As you can see, I can't see anyone on the minimap right now. And it's over here where most cars fail over here. So I take the left route over here, which is easier because then you can use the barrel roll ramp and get back up to top speed before you reach the finish line. So I did that and it was not too much of an issue with this car. We move on to our second lap, which we're not gonna skip this time. And we take pretty much the exact same route over here. I take the ramp this time, which is obviously better than not taking it. And it is very easy to maintain speed with this car, mainly because of its nitro efficiency. Um, so even if you're running out of nitro, you can always drift a little bit and you will have nitro for another few seconds. Over there, I was about to take a, a, a sharper turn there and try to avoid the rock, but I decided to play safe and go left at the last second. So as you can see over here, we're taking shockwave, we're uh, maintaining our 400 plus kilometer per hour speed and taking this turn without much of an issue. So it's really not that hard to drive this car. It's one of the easiest top tier cars to drive in A class. Actually, I would say the 918 is a bit harder to drive because of its uh, a worse drifting capabilities. So this car is a very easy car to drive if you're able to start it up and max it out. So as you can see, we're running this final corner here after taking that barrel roll, and it's an easy first place for us. I would say the competition in this rush season is not that great, since most people are just doing it for rep, and they're not using the best cars that are available. So it's not really the best test that we can do for this car, but it is the best that I have for now. So now we're onto an entirely different type of track. This is Cairo, and most variants in Cairo, including this one, um, test the top speed capabilities of cars a lot. So there's a big straight section for pretty much half the track where you need to maintain your highest speed without wrecking or making any mistakes. And if you do that, you pretty much can pass anyone who is even a little bit slower than you. As you can see, the start was a bit shaky because people were bumping me bumping into me from everywhere, but I can easily pass these Corvettes with Shockwave and some well-taken ramps. And I like to go right over here because I've had much practice with it. As long as you have good amount of nitro and good nitro efficiency, the right route is definitely a better choice here. So I take this ramp here, which is a bit weird, and um, drop down here, go up, and I can maintain a nearly 500 km per hour speed in the air. The Huracan is in front of me, which is one of the main competitors for the uh, Pagani Huayra VC because it is similar in many ways, except it is much slower since it's in B class. So as you can see, um, we're taking this barrel roll, we're slightly ahead of the Huracan, and we're taking this curve over here, which could have done could have been done better, but we'll see. Um, so we we end the first lap. I thought it was going to be a one lap race for some reason, which is why I 360. Um, but as you can see, the second lap wasn't much of an issue. I just widened the gap between me and the Huracan, and I was able to come in first again. This is our fifth first place finish in this video. Can we make it 6 out of 6? We shall see. So in our final race, we are facing a bunch of B-class cars. I think every single car besides mine was a B-class car. 
Now this wouldn't be much of an issue normally, but this is a this is a roam track, so there's lots of curves, lots of turns, lots of ramps. So it's a very dynamic track and it'll put this car to the test against some of the faster accelerating B-class cars. So we round this first turn here. A lot of people are pumping into me, which kind of ruined it a bit. But as long as I since I didn't get knocked down, I am still in the race over here. We are in last position right now somehow, or close to last position, but we're going to catch up here. So I like taking this right route here without taking any 360s, just because it's faster and it's much more fun to do. I like having fun in rush season, even though it's a very boring season overall. I took that knockdown over there, which is really cool, but then I wall ride it here, which is not a good option, no matter what you're doing. Even in the fastest of cars, I would say it's better to just try to take the corner normally. So we're taking some corners here, which shouldn't be much of an issue with the Huayra, because even though I had low nitro, the good nitro efficiency of this car helped me a lot. So taking this right route here, which could have been done better than that, but um, yeah, that's whatever. So we're going into our second lap here, and we have a pretty substantial lead over the rest of the competition, as you can see. Um, so we're taking this turn here, um, could have been done better obviously with Shockwave, and we're taking this ramp, and we're trying the exact same route as before, except this time I took this ramp too high and decided to take the left route here instead. Choosing, ramp, uh, choosing which route you want to take in multiplayer is really important, because in time limited events, you all are using pretty much the same cars, so you know which routes you want to take, but in multiplayer, your route depends on the um, situation that you're in. So if you're in a slower car than the other people, you want to take a route that's more oriented towards maintaining your speed as much as possible and taking ramps to get to a higher airspeed. So as you can see, I'm taking this right out here and I failed. <laughs> um, but yeah, whatever. So it looks like we are still able to come in first place over here. We had such a big lead that that didn't really affect our position and we came in first place. So that's the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please like the video if and comment if you enjoyed and see you guys later. Goodbye.